Howdy, it's Kyle comparing Kansas City and Philadelphia. With the Super Bowl coming up and the football teams fighting over which team might be better, I thought I would do something much more important and compare the cities to see which one is important because even if you lose the game, you can come back next year, be better, and win next year. But if you lose this competition, you're a loser forever. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a little competition where I assign a point to each city in all kinds of different categories. I'll be talking about economic stuff to include wages and housing costs. I'll be comparing the downtowns and other neighborhoods, livability indicators, and just all kinds of things to see which one of these cities is overall the best one. It's the Fountain City versus the City of Brotherly Love. First, just a few basics. Kansas City at the census had a population of 508,000. It's the largest city in Missouri and the 37th largest city in the country. Philadelphia at the census had a population of 1,603,000. It's the largest city in Pennsylvania and the sixth largest city in the U.S. Philadelphia is larger, but that's not going to give them a point in this competition. And there are going to be some categories where simply being larger is going to benefit Philadelphia, but many of them are just per capita or things that don't have to do with how big the city is. I'm going to start off with talking about some of the economic categories and then get to more of the fun stuff like music and food later on. The first category for the competition is population growth. Kansas City grew at a faster rate than Philadelphia between the 2010 and 2020 censuses, and since the beginning of the pandemic, Kansas City lost fewer people than Philadelphia. So the first point in the competition goes to Kansas City. The second category is the ratio of median house value to household income. Based on the most recent estimates at the time of me recording this, Kansas City's median house value is about $206,000 and median household income is $86,000. For Philadelphia, the median house value is $225,000 and median household income is $96,000. So these are quite similar numbers for both of these cities, but their ratio works out a little bit better for people in Philadelphia. But overall, these are two of the more affordable cities in the country based on wages and housing values. The third category is per capita personal income. This is a statistical calculation that involves lots of math, and I didn't do the calculations, but it does involve things such as cost of living and how that affects the wages and what you get for your dollar. For Philadelphia, the PCPI is just under $61,000, and for Kansas City, it's just over $53,000, so your dollar goes a little bit further in Philadelphia. When you compare the poverty rates, there is a big difference between the two cities. Philadelphia has the 13th highest poverty rate amongst cities over 100,000 people, while Kansas City ranks 57th, so it has a below average poverty rate compared to other big cities. Philadelphia is way above average, so this is a point for Kansas City. Now to compare each city's crime rate. Philadelphia is known for having a high violent crime rate, and with it being such a huge city, the total number of crimes is also very high as well. And although Kansas City certainly has plenty of problems with drugs and gangs like many others, it does have a below average crime rate compared to other big cities. So Kansas City does have plenty of issues with crime, but the overall rate is lower than Philadelphia's. Comparing the largest company headquartered in each city, for Philadelphia, it's Amerisource Bergen. They had over $214 billion in revenue last year and they're number 8 on the Fortune 500. Kansas City is home to some large companies, but none of which are anywhere near as large as Amerisource Bergen. So this is a big win for Philadelphia in this category. Now I want to discuss comparable neighborhoods in each city, starting with the downtowns. I like downtown Philadelphia being a much bigger city. It's very vibrant and even after the pandemic, it really seemed to be quite healthy with people walking on the street and a lot of activity. It's big enough to have different districts within downtown itself. And overall, I'd say it's one of the better downtowns of big cities in the U.S. On the other hand, I would say Kansas City has one of the weaker downtowns of big cities in the U.S. It really doesn't feel as big as the city is. You don't have the same kind of cluster of high-rises like you do in Philadelphia, and this overall isn't as interesting of a downtown, so the overall downtown category goes to Philadelphia. Comparing the prime nightlife area for each city, for Kansas City, it's Westport. This is the oldest neighborhood in the city and has a pretty good mix of bars and nightlife, everything from dive bars to nicer places and good restaurants. But it's not quite South Street in Philadelphia. This is one of the more well-known and nightlife entertainment districts in the entire country and for good reason. There's always something going on. It can get pretty rowdy, but there are some nice restaurants and stuff there as well. So for the nightlife category, I also have to go with Philadelphia and South Street. Comparing the wealthy and upscale shopping district for Philadelphia, it's Rittenhouse and the Rittenhouse Square area. 
And this is a very posh neighborhood. It's good for walking around. The park is pretty nice. And the surrounding houses in this part of town are some of the most expensive houses in the country, one of the wealthiest zip codes in America. It's a nice area with nice expensive shops, but it's also pretty similar to most other districts like this in other big cities. The comparable neighborhood in Kansas City is Country Club Plaza. And this has some of the same really expensive chain and local boutique shops. I do like a lot of the architecture in the neighborhood. Some of it has kind of a southwestern look to it, and it's very fitting for the Fountain City. And this is one of the better parts of town to see many of the city's famous fountains. So even though many of these neighborhoods throughout the country are kind of the same, I like that unique look and feel of Country Club Plaza, so I'm going to give the point to Kansas City in this category. Next up, I'm going to compare the historic neighborhoods in each city. Now this isn't really fair. Philadelphia is going to win this one pretty easily. It's arguably the most important city in the history of the United States of America and the formation of this country. Independence National Park is right downtown. It's a really cool spot to just walk around. And, but the residential neighborhoods in that area are really cool as well. You had a lot of really narrow streets in this part of town and it's just really nice to walk around and see some of these old buildings. And although Kansas City does have some old neighborhoods and the Westport again is the oldest neighborhood in town, they don't quite compare to what you're going to see in Philadelphia in terms of its history. And the last neighborhood comparison I'm going to make is which city has the not quite as bad worst neighborhood. When you talk about the worst urban poverty and worst skid row situations in America, Kansas City isn't usually one of the first cities brought up. And indeed, although there is plenty of urban poverty in KC, it's nowhere near as bad as Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, the Kensington neighborhood is the poorest part of the city, and the central part of Kensington is the poorest part of that. This neighborhood is, dare I say, legendary for how poor and high crime it is, and it's well known for having a skid row element very visible on the streets. So I would say Philadelphia has the worst, worst neighborhood, but that doesn't get them a point in this one. This goes to Kansas City. Now I want to talk about some of the livability indicators for each city, starting with walkability. Philadelphia, being an older city, does have more compact streets in the center city, and as a result, it is a little bit better for walking around, but once you get outside of the main center city, it is still a little bit better for walking around than Kansas City, with the streets being just more set up for walking, as they were mostly designed before the advent of cars being the main source of transportation. And although Kansas City isn't well known for being a top walking city, because it is on a perfect grid for most of it, it really isn't that bad of a city for walking either. But nonetheless, i got to give the point to Philly in walkability. Next up is comparing the public transportation of each city, and Philly is well regarded as having one of the best public transit systems in the country. I looked at all kinds of different rankings and studies from WalkScore and US News, Redfin, and others, and all of them had Philadelphia ranked in the top 10 in terms of public transit. And then the other end of the spectrum is Kansas City, usually considered one of the worst, if not the worst, big city in the US for public transit. WalkScore has it ranked 54th in the US, and they had Philadelphia at 5th. There is no light rail in the city, and in fact, voters voted it down when light rail was on the ballot. So for public transit, this is an easy win for Philadelphia. The next category is going to be comparing the largest city park in each, and one of the things I like to do when I visit a big city is to see its big city park. For Kansas City, it's Swope Park. It's over 1,800 acres, has an amphitheater, a nature center, a zoo, Lots of hiking and biking trails, there's a lake, and being Kansas City, there are some fountains there as well. For Philadelphia, it's Fairmount Park at over 2,000 acres. Fairmount Park has a lot of the same type of facilities, big large green space, woodland areas, a lot of hiking and biking trails. In this category, I'm going to go with Fairmount Park in Philadelphia, not just because it's bigger, but because it's right near downtown. It's nice to have this big urban oasis, some wooded areas, and some rolling hills right in the center of the city. Next category, I'm going to compare the museums of each city. For Philadelphia, you have the Museum of the American Revolution, and you also have the Franklin Center, which is one of the best science museums in the entire country, named after Benjamin Franklin. And Philadelphia is also home to one of the top art museums in the entire country. Kansas City is also home to many great museums, including the National World War I Museum and the American Jazz Museum. It's also home to the Negro Leagues Baseball Hall of Fame and the National Museum of Toys and Miniatures. And Kansas City has its own very nice art museum, and theirs is free admission. So overall, I'm going to give the point to Kansas City here. Although Philadelphia does have some great museums and a lot of great history, I think that the variety of museums in Kansas City is much more interesting. It's now time to compare each city's signature food, so a Philly cheesesteak and Kansas City barbecue. 
Now these are two things I really love to eat, so this is a tough pick for me. Some people prefer the cheese whiz on it, some prefer regular cheese, some like peppers, some will say peppers ruin it. But regardless of your preference, when you find a good one, it's really good. And then you got Kansas City Barbecue. For my taste, this is my favorite barbecue in the country. I love KC style ribs, brisket, and burnt ends. So although I do love Philly cheesesteaks, I do have to go with Kansas City and their barbecue here. Next up, I'm going to compare the top selling musical artists from each city. For Philadelphia, it's Daryl Hall and John Oates who have sold more than 100 million albums. For Kansas City, the top selling artist of all time is jazz saxophone legend Charlie Parker. He goes back to the 1940s and 50s and is considered one of the greatest jazz saxophonists of all time, but he sold nowhere near 100 million albums. Oh, oh, here she comes. Philadelphia gets the nod in this category. And now to compare the total number of major pro sports championships. Teams playing in Kansas City have won seven championships. The Chiefs have won two Super Bowls and one NFL championship before the Super Bowls. The Royals won two World Series. And the MLS teams have won two cups, one with Sporting KC, one with the previous Kansas City Wizards. However, the Philadelphia sports teams have won 18 championships. The Eagles have won four NFL championships, including one Super Bowl. Baseball A's won five World Series while playing in Philadelphia, and the current Phillies have won two World Series. The old NBA Warriors won three NBA championships, and the current 76ers have won two. And the NHL Philadelphia Flyers have won two Stanley Cups. So you add up all the categories, and Philadelphia wins 11-7 with it having a more interesting downtown and other neighborhoods and being better for walkability, public transit, and parks, I think overall Philadelphia is just a better big city. Kansas City isn't awful, but for this competition, you lose. So that's my comparison of Kansas City and Philadelphia, and Philadelphia comes out on top, and that's fitting for me because personally I do prefer Philadelphia to KC, but don't worry KC, your friends at Hallmark sent a nice uh, sympathy card for me to show you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about U.S. geography. I've got videos like this. I've got specific videos on states, ranking things in all kinds of different categories. So expect things to be a little bit nerdy on this channel. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Dan D., if you're interested in purchasing a pin for the viewer pin map or just to support the channel, check out my Patreon page, link in the description. And as always, thank you very much.